Over the weekend, it was revealed that the U.S. and Iran have reached a deal that over the next six months will temporarily halt the Iranian nuclear program in exchange for rolling back some of the uh, economic sanctions that have up until this point been crippling the Iranian economy. Now, obviously, we had to give up some stuff for this deal, and not everybody is happy with it, not domestically and not internationally, but President Obama obviously happy that some steps have been taken, some progress has been made to, uh, to forestall the future development of a nuclear weapon in Iran. Uh, so here's the president defending the deal. While today's announcement is just a first step, it achieves a great deal. For the first time in nearly a decade, we have halted the progress of the Iranian nuclear program, and key parts of the program will be rolled back. Iran has committed to halting certain levels of enrichment and neutralizing part of its stockpiles. Iran cannot use its next-generation centrifuges, which are used for enriching uranium. Iran cannot install or start up new centrifuges, and its production of centrifuges will be limited. Iran will halt work at its plutonium reactor, and new inspections will provide extensive access to Iran's nuclear facilities and allow the international community to verify whether Iran is keeping its commitments. These are substantial limitations which will help prevent Iran from building a nuclear weapon. Simply put, they cut off Iran's most likely paths to a bomb. Meanwhile, this first step will create time and space over the next six months for more negotiations to fully address our comprehensive concerns about the Iranian program. And because of this agreement, Iran cannot use negotiations as cover to advance its program. So that's what we got, but of course this is diplomacy. We did have to give up something, and while we've done a, a significant amount of damage in the short run to their centrifuge industry, we will be rolling back some of the, uh, some of the uh, sanctions that we had. Uh, let's get the details on that. On our side, the United States and our friends and allies have agreed to provide Iran with modest relief while continuing to apply our toughest sanctions. We will refrain from imposing new sanctions, and we will allow the Iranian government access to a portion of the revenue that they have been denied through sanctions. But the broader architecture of sanctions will remain in place and we will continue to enforce them vigorously. And if Iran does not fully meet its commitments during this six-month phase, we will turn off the relief and ratchet up the pressure. In these negotiations, nothing will be agreed to unless everything is agreed to. The burden is on Iran to prove to the world that its nuclear program will be exclusively for peaceful purposes. So, we have a deal. It's been called historic, but is it a good deal? What do you guys think? I think it's a fantastic deal. I feel oh, safer already. <laughs> Don't you feel safer already? <laughs> yeah, I was actually able to sleep for the first time in many months. You know, there's two, I just like to make two points. First of all, everybody who's screaming about we're going to get into the people who are against it, but uh, what? let's just go right at it. What if Iran gets a nuclear weapon? Then what? Do you think they're going to start invading other countries and stuff and start taking over? Do you think they will invade uh, or Israel? But Israel, everyone knows, has their own nuclear weapons. So that's assured uh, destruction. So that's a deterrent. So I don't understand what the big deal is about. Why do some countries get to have... Pakistan has a nuclear weapon. We know they do. So is Iran crazier than they are? I mean, I just... It, it, it depends on the month. It, yes, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't scare me as much as it scares everybody else that Iran might get a nuclear weapon. Well, I, I I do agree. We should have some list of crazy countries because I feel like nobody does know who the good guys and the bad guys are anymore. I'm not even sure we know anymore. So we don't know, right? Is Pakistan? You know, now they're saying. Uh, I know we're going to talk about this in a bit, but that Saudi Arabia is ready to buy a nuke from uh, Pakistan because they want to offset. Iran. Right. So it's like, have we just opened up some sort of Pandora's box where now we just unleashed an arms race? I don't know. And had we not done it, well, then they still would have been charging for the bomb. So it, it's an odd, we're in, we're in a very weird place, I think, with this. Yeah, you can't cherry pick, right? What's good for the goose has got to be good for the gander. And certainly, um, you know, I like Dave's idea of the list because we can't be more afraid of certain countries having this type of weapon and not as afraid of others. That It just doesn't sit well. Well, well also, we have. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so. well, I mean that's okay. <laughs> there are a few, right. a a few hundred, I done, think. And we just got done unilaterally, illegally, invading a country in the Middle East and killing their people and trying to extract their natural resources, which had failed. Wait, which? Yeah. Are you talking about Iraq or Afghanistan? I'm talking both, <laughs> oh, right? Right, yeah, right. So, we, so uh, who the fuck are we to be telling other people what weapon you can have to defend yourself from us? Yeah, well, that's what I think that, that's yeah. a good point. I'm going to play devil's advocate just a little bit because obviously the, the politics of nuclear arms is, is, is complicated. I'm trying to figure out how scared I should be. Mm -hmm. Should I be less scared than yesterday? So, uh, so you, you brought up a good point about you know having a bomb, it's not just that you could potentially use it in a future conflict. You could sell the technology to another state. You could give a bomb to a terrorist group or another state. Yeah. It could be stolen from you. The government that seems perfectly reasonable today could be replaced by a bunch of crazies tomorrow. Yes. These yes. are significant concerns. And uh, it, look, as hard as it is to enrich enough uranium to produce a bomb or to develop the technology to, to produce plutonium, which they don't currently have, and this uh, deal actually stops them from doing, the actual technology to produce the, the ability to turn that into a warhead and deliver to a target is more complicated. That's technology that if they were to develop could be very valuable to sell to another state. Right, but people have already been saying, you know, this could lead to a dirty bomb where that you could just put mm -hmm. in a suitcase so you don't necessarily have to put it on. A, and these are all, yeah. you can extrapolate the argument. I think what this really is about though, this is about trust. Do we really trust the things that Obama said in terms of inspectors? Do we trust that and do we trust the Iranians? I mean, it really, if you think about it, if we take it to like the most base level, Iran right now blocks Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So there are no Iranians uh, watching and this right now. you love Twitter. Unfortunately, and I love Twitter, <laughs> and I'm angry about that. But really, so if they're, if they're so afraid of letting their own people know what the truth is, they probably are looking at us a little bit like, ah, oh, what a mm -hmm. bunch of patsies. They're buying our line of BS. So I think there's some truth in, in yeah. that and line of thinking. Let's also remember the last uh, uh, Arab dictator we talked into giving up his nuclear program, we then a couple years later killed him and uh, took over his country. That was Libya, right? right. So mm -hmm. that's not a good message to send to the rest of the people that we want to disarm you, uh, themselves by, you know, unilaterally. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll, we'll be real nice to you. Just get rid of that thing that assures that we won't attack you. And then as soon as you get rid of it, we're going to attack you. Yeah. So that's yeah. so. Uh, people forget all about this. The aggressor in the world is the United States, often, and certainly in the Middle East. And again, I go back to, I don't see, it doesn't scare me if Iran gets a nuclear weapon. They don't seem any crazier than anybody else. Well, to Rick's point too, um, I, I have issue with the whole verification process too. I talked about that this morning on my radio show. Like, tell me more about this. Uh, you know, yeah, I understand, you know, going in, inspecting and stuff, but I, I don't know that I fully trust that verification process in and of itself. And, and we hear Kerry talking over and over, and we'll see that in a second. Verify, yeah. verify, verify. Tell me more about that. But, and yeah. also, you know, Wendy Sherman, who helped negotiate this deal, she's the same lady who negotiated the North Korea deal, and they did the exact same thing. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure North Korea mm -hmm. has a nuke right mm -hmm. now. So, <laughs> you know, that does, it, it's sort of your point that actually by doing some of this stuff, sometimes you push them yeah. into getting a bomb because they go, oh, look, look what happened to Gaddafi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or look, if we don't do it, then, then we're still screwed. Or having the inspectors on the ground, if they do not actually find the facilities where it's actually being developed, could lead to a false sense of security that we have inspected them. I mean, I, I still lean in the, in the direction of saying that having the inspectors is better than not having the inspectors. And since oh, this yeah. is perhaps the first successful negotiation of any kind between the Iran, Iran and the West in 37 years, I lean towards it being a positive thing. But one, one other thing I want to throw out there, just because like I was taught in, in, in grad school when I was studying uh, government that you know more nukes is better for different states because it stops international war and things like that because mutually assured destruction. But the important thing to consider when talking about mutually assured destruction is that it's not predicated on two states having nukes. It's predicated upon them having the ability to deliver nukes after receiving a nuclear strike from another state. Ours was based on uh, land-based cruise missiles, bombers flying 24-7, and Trident uh, submarines. Pakistan doesn't have that. They have a facility with a plane with a bomb on it. Now, if India bombs that facility and takes out their ability to use bombs or to use the nukes, you don't have a mutually assured destruction. And so would we have that with Iran? Perhaps not. Perhaps it would not actually create more safety internationally. So, but wait, what is the fear, though, John? I mean, is the fear that once Iran gets a nuclear weapon, they're going to start threatening people and invading countries? Is that well, really the thing? It's not my fear. I, I don't know that it's a, I, I don't think that they're afraid of invasion. I don't think Iran, Iran is threatening to mm -hmm. invade. But the idea of a nuke, I mean, there's a reason that Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Israel, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, these are not countries that work together or like each other very right. much. But for some reason, all the countries around Iran seem upset about 
about this. So there is something <laughs> a little weird. You know, a bunch of countries like England and France and Germany and us, we're all like, oh, well, here's a deal. We like a deal. Everyone likes a deal. But the countries who are right surrounded by them are all going, eh, something ain't right here. Yeah, so certainly Israel's not happy well, about they, it. Yeah. You know, they're, they want to keep the, the economic sanctions. That's the whole deal. They want to keep the economic sanctions on Iraq. They don't like Iraq. And, uh, you know, this deal doesn't lift all the sanctions. Like, here's this, the, the embargo against Iranian oil, banking, and other financial sanctions will remain in place. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot of sanctions that are still remaining in yeah. place. So. Well, but bear in mind, what we're talking about right now is the first six months. Right. Where, you know, they temporarily halt things and we work on all the other sticking points of perhaps destroying some of the centrifuges yes. in return for getting rid of the first, like we can't give them all, get rid of all the sanctions right. because then they'd have no incentive, you know, to continue. It's like when we gave all the money to, to North Korea. Right. You gotta dole it out over time. Yeah. Not everybody happy with the deal between uh, the US and Iran regarding their nuclear program. In fact, many uh, Republicans, not happy at all. Let's listen. First of all, since when do we trust Iran? We have just rewarded very bad and dangerous behavior. Now is just not the time to ease sanctions when they are working. So you're We've got all the leverage in the negotiation and we've let them out of the trap. So that if you stop enrichment, not just pause it. And we may, we may have just encouraged more violence in the future than we have stopped. We should in fact insist that a country which has deceived the world, a country which has defied UN Security Council resolutions, uh, can't be trusted. When you look at what we've really gotten out of this, it's moving us away from the direction of prevention of them developing a weapon. Why now? Why release that pressure now? Iran has not changed. I think it bodes uh, very, very ominously for the region and in fact U.S. security. And we're treating them completely out of sync with who they are. That's what bothers me so much. This deal doesn't represent the fact that we're dealing with some of the most thuggish people in the world. Any kind of deal with this regime in Iran is not worth the paper it's written on. Why would you make the same mistake to a nation that will proliferate a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. So is the alternative a military strike? Where is there nothing in between? No, there is something in between. I don't buy into this, what I believe is a false choice between war or a policy of appeasement. Once you get them to the table, you let them know what the final deal would look like and say, take this or else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, that, by the way, was all within the first five minutes after the deal was announced. <laughs> um, I love the lessons in diplomacy from yes. them. You yeah. punch them in the face and you ask them if they want another. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. I mean, it, we're talking about during the break, guys. I mean, that is what compromise is. And I'm so tired of hearing uh, anybody, you know, uh, basically being offended by the president's uh, efforts to be diplomatic. That is what it is. I, I, I'm tired of that being seen as soft or somehow jeopardizing the safety of America. I mean, that's ridiculous.